Greetings one and all and welcome to Time Traveler. I know several people have been excited about this series, myself included. I'm thrilled to share this with you and my first guest on this series, and in fact the illustrious landlady of 1925 Time Traveler Way, will be Dame Agatha Christie. You saw it coming. <laughs> so you'll notice there are some interesting um, traits that I've given her, and all of them have something to do with her life story, which I hope you'll find as interesting as I do. Um, there are some cool tidbits like the fact that I made her bedroom in her apartment green before realizing that it was said that that was her favorite color. So let's go ahead and jump into her story as you watch me try to recreate her beautiful face. So to start with, Dame Agatha, who wasn't born a dame, <laughs> was born on September 15th of 1890 in Devon, England, and she was mostly homeschooled. A lot of articles you see about her will mention that her mother didn't want her to read. I don't think that's probably exactly the case, but at any rate, she ended up attending a finishing school in Paris, and at age 15, she was a voracious reader. She wrote tons of stories just on her own. She had a great imagination. She also studied voice and piano at the age of 16, and she was quite good to the point where she could have done it professionally, but her nerves about presenting her, her craft to an audience kind of took over and hampered that. Uh, so lucky for us, <laughs> she went on to do more of her writing. Eventually she was dared by her sister Madge to write a story of novel length, and she succeeded by finally writing The Mysterious Affair at Styles, one of my personal favorites. It took five years and six publishers rejections before it was put into print. It procured a modest sum of 25 pounds. She later became the most translated novelist in history and one of the best selling with over 2 billion copies sold. Some sources state it goes as high as 4 billion, which seems like a large disparity, but I'm willing to believe that. She wrote over 80 novels in her lifetime, including nonfiction and romance, among her many renowned mystery novels. Her most beloved character was Belgian detective Hercule Poirot and the mild-mannered Miss Marple, both of them, very beloved characters based uh, for Miss Marple, based on her maternal grandmother, and Hercule was based loosely, um, it's hearsay probably, on a man that she once saw on a bus station that sparked her imagination. Um, she went on to marry Colonel Archibald Christie in 1914, who was a Royal Flying Corps pilot, and she became a nurse in World War I at age 24. The Mysterious Affair at Styles was published in 1920 to give some perspective on the events of her life. She hated mention of the following incident, but in 1926, the year of her mother's death and shortly after finding out that her husband had been having an affair, tsk tsk, she disappeared. Her car was found near a lake and the worst was suspected, but she was located after about 11 days at a Harrogate hotel she had registered under the name of her husband's mistress and uh, she was spotted by some guests who recognized her uh, but the incident was never spoke of again uh, once she returned um, it wasn't even mentioned in her autobiography some think it was a publicity stunt but she was likely trying to escape the tragic events of the year she and Archibald divorced in 1928 for obvious reasons and from some stories I've read, she didn't take it very well, um, but she did move on. And in 1930, she was wed to archaeology professor Sir Max Mellowen. She became Lady Mellowen and remained married to him for the rest of her life. She accompanied him on many expeditions and recounted their adventures in a memoir called Come Tell Me How You Live in 1946. She also wrote a couple of romance novels under the pseudonym Mary Westmacott, a family name. She also found inspiration for one of her literary victims during their travels and expeditions and was said to have been fond of, wait for it, surfing. Bet you didn't see that coming, unless you're a diehard fan like me. She definitely considered surfing to be a pretty fun and easy sport, uh, barring any wipeouts, which I'm sure she had a few. 
She and her husband traveled to a lot of places. They spent months each year in the Middle East on annual expeditions, but the surfing took place in a variety of locations that were quite exotic, including Hawaii, Africa, New Zealand, and Australia, just to name a few. They got a lot of great practice in, and I have read a few accounts that they may have been the first British citizens to actually ride a surfboard standing up because their skill was just that good. So that's kind of a fun little tidbit there, hence the um, daughter of the ocean kind of little trait that I gave her over there. So if you saw that and wondered what I was doing, now you know. So some of her traits um, are unexpected, some are normal. She's a bookworm, that's one of them. She loves the outdoors, definitely came from her love of travel and expeditions, and of course, best-selling author, which she is, some say, of all time, and that's pretty accurate. So moving on to the next part of her life, during World War II, she worked in a hospital pharmacy where she acquired a world of knowledge about various drugs and poisons. This would later serve her well as she looked for clever ways for the murderers in her novels to dispatch victims. Although many methods were used to bump off Christie victims, that one was one that she used very, very stealthily in the novels. If you know the stories, once again, I hate to keep saying it, but you've probably seen some of the more creative ways that poison was used in her stories, and brilliantly, I might add. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a groupie, just face it. Um, <laughs> Christie also wrote plays, um, and among them, her most successful was Mousetrap. It opened at the Ambassador Theatre in the West End of London on November 25th, 1952, and it holds the world's record for the longest initial run of any play. By September of 2018, there had been more than 27,500 performances, and sadly, the play was finally closed on March 16th of 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Just one more casualty to that sad affair and a pretty devastating one, I might add, because it was part of her amazing legacy. Her work also boasts several adaptations to film, television, and even video games. Her legacy is very broad, and she remains quite beloved to many, and some people, a lot of people, may have found her through one of those adaptations, uh, most notably the Poirot series um, that was done by David Suchet, which I'll mention a little more later. In 1955, she was the very first recipient of the Mystery Writers of America Grand Master Award. Pretty amazing, and again, well-deserved. She was given the title of Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire in 1971, and in 1974, she made her final public appearance. She also, as a side note, did not really enjoy taking pictures for the dust jackets of her books. Just a fun little trivia tidbit there that I learned about. Um, the most prolific character in Christie's work is Hercule Poirot. She was often known to say that he was rather insufferable, and I have a lot of thoughts about that because obviously I'm a big fan of his. I love him to death. Um, but what I feel most about that is that her talent was just so enormous and her imagination so great that she was able to create a character that leapt off the page and took on a persona of his own to the point where she could respond to him emotionally as if he were a living, breathing man standing before her. Um, he just wasn't somebody that she liked and I admire that in her. She was able to see him as a full-blown person, not just a character on a page. And that just makes him, it just, it endears him to me that much more. I just adore Poirot. <laughs> um, let's see, um, his final story was written in the 40s, but wasn't actually released until the 70s, um, which is an interesting fact as well. Um, and now to go back into the David Suchet series, it took him exactly 25 years to film the 70 Poirot stories between 1989 and 2013. If you love the series as much as I do, and I own it, watch it all the time, then you simply must read the David Suchet book chronicling his life as Poirot. It's called <laughs> Atlee, Poirot, and Me. It brought me to tears, and it was a beautiful piece of writing. I also listened to the audiobook narrated by Mr. Suchet, and it is just lovely. It's wonderful to hear what went behind the scenes, went on behind the scenes, and all of the things that he did to prepare for that role, and how much respect he gave to the family of Agatha Christie, and 
he was even visited, I think, on set at one point. Um, I believe it was her daughter. I'm just remembering these little tidbits from the book and how honored he was that they really believed in what he was doing and that he was doing, serving, you know, justice to her memory, he was bringing honor to her by portraying him exactly as she put him down on the page. And I thought that was beautiful because obviously this legacy means a lot to all of us, but most importantly, her family. And I just really thought it was lovely that he took so much time to really consider that and respect the family and respect her memory and what she was thinking when she wrote him into all of those stories that have become so famous now. And Poirot has been portrayed by many actors, but definitely I believe that most people picture David Suchet's character when they think of Barrow now. And that's just a testament to what an amazing job he has done. So um, let's see, the, the other tidbit about that one that I find really interesting is um, when Hercule finally met his demise in 1975, the New York Times printed an obituary for the renowned detective. He had become so real to everyone. He was the first fictional character to receive such an honor in the New York Times, or anywhere for that matter. And it was the public's way of paying homage to the beautiful, lovely, quirky, very um, fastidious, let's say, <laughs> detective that we love so much. He will forever be my favorite Christie character, even though there are so many wonderful ones. Um, he definitely is my favorite, and he's the reason that I really, really got involved in all of her writing. Um, because I just love those stories so very much. Enough about me, though. Uh, Dame Christie finally passed away of natural causes on January 12, 1976. Her legacy is still reaching the minds of people who long for mystery and entertainment. And these stories just, they're just such fireside, cozy, bring you back to center, beautiful moments in my life and the, the series, the movies, the books, the audiobooks, all of that has been such an important part of who I am and the moments when I feel calm and centered. And I hope if you don't know anything about Dame Christie, if you haven't read any of her wonderful books, please go out and look for one. You probably can find them anywhere. You can find them on Audible. I'm not being sponsored, so I don't get anything out of that, but I do know that they have a ton of her books and um, if you if you don't find reading fun and you read through the audio version that's a good way to get it done <laughs> and just submerge yourself into her world which is quite beautiful and luxurious and taking place during a time period that I find near and dear to my heart um, just the 20s and 30s primarily the way that the show was filmed was really beautiful, just opulent, lush, gorgeous colors, textures, fabrics, just captured the romance of that period. And then the intrigue comes in and it's just a beautiful combination. So if you get a chance, do look into it. And hopefully we will be getting a lot more of little tidbits of her personality through the series. Um, I also read that she was fond of dogs. So we may just be getting her a dog to live in her little apartment with her. And um, here you see me going through and trying to figure out how to how to do this little kitchen in the apartment. <laughs> so we've already seen her, she looks beautiful. She was always in kind of those beautiful suits like wool and tweed and um, just representing herself as a very, you know, regal woman. And I did give her a little bit of fun in some of her other outfits because she's gonna be tooling around this apartment building and taking care of things. Um, just when I put her into her apartment the first time, she immediately went downstairs and jumped in the pond out back because she loves the outdoors and that's how she felt that day. And I love it. I think that her spirit would have been somewhat spontaneous and she would have done things like that just based on some of the things that I've mentioned today. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. She just seemed like she was a tasteful, classy woman, but also she had a heart and a spirit of fun and wanting to explore the world and know more about people and help people and just give of herself, which is great. Probably one of the biggest reasons I'm attracted to her as a character for this series um, and definitely much respect to her um, and all of her legacy and her family. So hopefully nothing that I've said or done in my video today is 
in any way inaccurate or offensive. If so, I apologize profusely. But for now, we're just trying to have fun with a lady that I love a lot. So we're making her little cute apartment here. She's probably going to have the biggest apartment on the top floor. Um, she's got a couple of different rooms up there and she's got her own little kind of suite where she can hang out, she can cook for herself. There is a huge kiss kitchen downstairs which if you saw the original video launching the series, you'll see downstairs there's a lot of common area. So not everyone will have all the amenities that Miss Christie has here, but they will have very luxurious, lovely 1920s inspired apartments. Um, again, I don't use CC, I've mentioned that in the past, and I choose not to specifically because I want to use as much of the game as I can and try to be creative and appropriate things that I think could have existed in that period that exist in the game already. It would be fairly easy to find things that are super accurate and, you know, download them, stick them in there. They would look gorgeous and I would feel great looking at it, but this kind of feels more organic to me, just finding stuff in the game and working with what's already there. So I'm going to, um, not talk a whole lot about what's going on in the video. There's some, I've included some things like um, pots that you'll see on the mantle, you know, all old kind of look like they were dug up pots on her fireplace mantle. Things just to symbolize who she was and what she loved, you know, and she's gonna have her cozy little bedroom with a rocking chair. There's a study with a writing desk and, you know, her tons and tons of books there with her so that she can feel at home and sit down at the desk and and sit and write in her journal or whatever she chooses so it's a cozy little apartment just for her and possibly her dog friend uh, we'll see how that pans out before the next episode but eventually i think once i've presented each of my characters in the building there is a small possibility that we'll do a Let's Play series allowing all of our famous and beloved characters roam the building and just have fun together. Hopefully there will be some time for that. And if that's something that would interest you, by all means, let me know in the comments. Um, if you want to see these famous people mingling in this building and having just a regular sim life, I think I would want to see it. <laughs> so if you do too, let me know. Um, we're going to wrap up the apartment in just a moment. And I'm going to let you enjoy some of the, the music that I've added here and just the finishing touches. And I hope that you'll join us for the next episode. I'm so grateful for all the support for this series. And I hope that you love it as much as I do because so far it has been quite a rewarding and wonderful experience to do this research and really showcase people that I admire. Thank you again. I hope you guys are all having a beautiful day and that you are staying happy, safe, and healthy. Till next time, much love from The Simstress.